Hi, this is Julie Martin on the Big Island of Hawaii, and I'm just calling in to check in with my man Stu of Love Yoga Anatomy. So Stu, your question is, how should our current expanding knowledge of the role fascia plays in the body affect how we approach our asana? And this is a really important question at the moment because right now, um, more than ever, we're seeing injuries in the world of asana so much and we have to look really at what's the cause of that. And a lot of it is not really understanding how our bodies work. And so if you don't understand anything at all about fascia, I really suggest you check out some of the Tom Myers videos. Uh, you can find quite a few of them on YouTube. He breaks down the basics, right? Um, up until recently, we used to think that our body, recently I mean about the last 50 or 60 years, we used to just think of our body as separate muscles attached to bones that had different functions. Now that we understand the role that fascia plays, there is so much more going on. Fascia is this fluidy, juicy, interconnective tissue that goes from skin to muscle, muscle to bone, into the viscera of our organs, our brain, and our eyes. One of the most important discoveries is that it has more neuroreceptors per square centimeter than even our irises. This means that it can send and receive information to the brain and the other body parts more efficiently and effectively than even our eyes send messages to our brain. So we have to understand that to keep fascia healthy, which is what we want to do because this is encompassing everything in our body, we need to keep it moving, keep, the, keep it hydrated and keep that fluid nice and juicy. So you might think, well, keep it moving, I do yoga, that's good. I'm done, right? Unfortunately, we have to look at how we move in the practice. And one of the biggest problems that we have is that the recent traditional practices is very, very linear. And it's very structured, much so that we see a forward bend, a back bend, and a twist. And basically, that's the end of our range of motion. Um, if you don't know a lot about the history of current asana practice, it's very, very new, only about 100 and 150 years old. And a lot of the stuff that we do, including sun salutations and things like that, come from German and Swedish military training techniques, right? Boot camp. Um, and that kind of makes a lot of sense now that you think about the first time you ever did your sun, the first sun salutation, right? So we keep this repetitive motion in um, only one range, right? A forward, a back bend, and a twist. And maybe we add different elements to that as we progress in different asanas, but the truth is we're, n we're limiting our movement, right? Fascia likes everything to move, including in your face, in your wrists, in your fingers, your knees and your ankles, etc., etc. So we have to look at range of motion. We have to look at how we're working with the joints instead of just thinking, okay, I'm going to do a forward bend and I'm going to do a back bend. So you think Paschimottanasana, Urdhva Dhanurasana. Well, you keep working with just that one range of motion, you will get more length in that range of motion, but you will also be putting at risk any of the tendons and the ligaments uh, that connect to the fascia and then into the bones through, through that range of motion only, right? And so it becomes weaker. Think of a paper clip. You bend it forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, eventually it breaks, etc. right? But when we're working with range, and mo range of motion, changing the way we put ourselves into, let's say, shapes, we can start working with engaging and releasing, finding space, and also finding a sense of contraction, finding a bit more um, uh, stability in the joints at the same time. Ultimately, we're looking for mobility and stability in the body, right? This doesn't mean we throw out the tradition. We have to remember, our true tradition of the Hatha Yoga comes through a tantric practice. Tantra is exploratory, right? Tantra is not about limiting yourself to just one thing. Okay, so when we look at modern yoga and the growth of modern yoga, we have to look at exploring it with an open mind. We don't throw the asana out completely. We don't say, oh, well, this must be bad for me. That's not what I'm getting at at all. What I'm saying is how we approach the asana. Perhaps we're looking at changing, moving in and out of it, whether we're holding or whether we're not holding sometimes. We can't just really, we can't just stick to one form of practice only. 
uh, we have to have some variety, right? If you only do a shtanga, you need to mix it up, but mix it up with something that isn't so stretchy. Mix it up with something that's more engaging. Uh, you have to look at different lines of movement, the ranges of motion between the rib cage and the hips, which is often totally ignored in a lot of yoga. Check out the world of Tai Chi, right? There's not many people that injure themselves from doing too much Tai Chi. In fact, there's medical records that kind of prove people that do Tai Chi actually have some of the healthiest, most you know, stable yet mobile bodies. And I think this is interesting because we can bring an element of how the Tai Chi practice is approached into our asana practice without throwing away the asana altogether. And ultimately, we have to remember the practice isn't in the asana. The practice is in the awareness. It's not about getting, you know, your feet and somebody else's feet behind your head as well. The practice is about finding the awareness as you experience something. And this is really where the fascia comes in as well because it's proprioceptive. It's basically how we understand and feel and experience the moment in our body. And that's where we should be headed with the focus. Thanks.